Hi everyone, there's more indictments, as I'm sure you're aware by now, uh, by Bob Muller and the FBI against this time 12 more Russians uh, by name, by rank, in the GRU, which is Russia's sort of intelligence unit. Um, this is the first time I'm aware that there's been any allegations of anything. Man, I need to learn how to iron a shirt. Um, there's been any allegations from or any uh, indictments of people specifically to do with the leaks of the DNC documents or the 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 stealing of the DNC documents. Um, the indictments came out yesterday. It's 29 pages long. I'll leave a link below. Um, it's extremely detailed, extremely detailed. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There are masses of amounts of allegations in there. Um, allegations such as how um, the Russians used malware and spear phishing techniques and key loggers and all sorts of things with regards to dozens of, of DNC and DCCC staff. It lays out how and when uh, WikiLeaks contacted G uh, Goosefer 2.0 and DC Leaks to obtain the docs. It lays out why Goosefer 2.0 and, and that Goosefer 2.0 and DC Leaks are actually things that the Russians set up to take the scent away from Russia. It highlights a lot of stuff. So we're going to have to have a lot to, to, to unpack here. First of all, I think we need to address something. There are no allegations in this report whatsoever that any Americans were involved, any Americans did anything wrong, anything, any Americans did anything illegal, any Americans uh, knew they were in contact with Russians, or most importantly, any allegations that it changed the result whatsoever and that's not just me and my evaluation of it it's deputy attorney general rod rosenstein's evaluation of it as well take a look there's no allegation in this indictment that the americans knew they were corresponding with russian intelligence officers there's no allegation in this indictment that any american citizen committed a crime there's no allegation that the conspiracy changed the vote count or affected any election result. I'm sure the mainstream media and the BBC over here and CNN and MSNBC in America will lead with that, that there was no allegations that it changed the result whatsoever. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. So what's in, the, what's in these indictments? He's ob this indictment is obviously uh, it's damning and it's really detailed. It really goes into a hell of a lot of detail. Which is really why it's so surprising the level of detail that it's gone in uh, that that go that has gone into it that absolutely zero nada no not even a shred of evidence has been attached to these allegations none whatsoever to back up these allegations they haven't given it literally could just be a fairy story for all we know literally just could be and I can hear when people say oh well not everything's in it not everything is is a um, is a conspiracy and the FBI don't lie about everything to that I say no everything isn't a conspiracy and the FBI obviously don't lie about everything but there are a lot of conspiracies and the FBI do lie about a lot of things so let's just stop with the bullshit shall we let's stop with saying oh not everything's a conspiracy we're not saying everything is Stop saying the FBI don't lie about everything. We're not saying they do, but they do lie. And they have done for decades, as have the CIA. So let's just stop with the bullshit and stop with trying to paint people as lunatics when they're actually looking something and looking for... They, all we want is evidence. That's all. If somebody provided me with evidence right now to back up everything in those indictments, I would say, right, well, okay, thank you. I apologise and I do a video immediately saying here's the evidence, shit, we were all wrong all along, damn it was Russia. But no, still no evidence. None. The next thing I, I, that came to was, in this, in this indictment, it actually says how 
the, the GRU had set up Gusa for 2.0 and DC leagues to sort of throw the centre away from Russia. Which, you know, to, oh, it's not a Russian thing. So if that's the case, why is the why is Gusa for 2.0 saying, hey, we're Russian and uh, copy and pasting Russian stuff onto the da uh, Russian data onto the documents to literally just point the finger straight at Russia? Why? It's like this is the souls with poisonings all over again. Why would they do that? It makes no sense whatsoever. Who benefits from that? <laughs> and then there's the timeline. And Max Blumenthal, he, uh, he noticed this. And to be honest, I noticed it. Um, but he noticed it and put it on Twitter. So I've got to give him kudos just in case anybody thinks I'm um, plagiarizing him or taking his ideas. But it, it does say this. Now, this is. Uh, in from the indictment now it says you use of organization one there use of organization one in the indictment is WikiLeaks okay and it says this in order to expand their interference in the 2016 US presidential election the conspirators uh, the conspirators transferred many of the documents they stole from the DNC and the chairman of the Clinton campaign to WikiLeaks the conspirators posing as Guccifer 2.0, discussed the release of the stolen documents and the timing of those releases with WikiLeaks to heighten their impact on the 2016 US presidential election. Notice I've highlighted the date there. On or about, when it says on or about, it means on, because they've got the, they've got the, the private messages, they've got the email, so they know what date it is. On or about June the 22nd, WikiLeaks sent a private message to, a message to Goose of a 2.0 to send any new material stolen from the DNC here for us to review and it will have a much higher, higher impact than what you are doing. And then on the July the 6th, WikiLeaks added, if you have anything Hillary related, we want it in the next two days, preferable because the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, is approaching and she will solidify, she meaning Hillary, will solidify Bernie supporters behind her after, end quote. Um, yeah, yeah, that was a good good conclusion, WikiLeaks, but yeah, it didn't quite work out. They tried to solidify the Bernie supporters behind Hillary, but they weren't having it. The conspirators responded, okay, I see. WikiLeaks then explained, quote, we think Trump only has a 25% chance of, Hillary, of winning against Hillary, so conflict between Bernie and Hillary is interesting. Then it says, after failed attempts to transfer the stolen documents starting in late 2016, on or about July the 14th, 2016, the conspirators posing as a goose of a 2.0 sent WikiLeaks an, uh, an email with an attachment with a title on it. The conspirators explained to WikiLeaks that the encrypted file contained instructions on how to access an online archive of stolen DNC documents. On July, uh, July the 19th, uh, July 18th, 2016, WikiLeaks confirmed it has the one gigabyte or so archive and would make a release of the stolen documents this week. And then I think it was four days later they released the documents. But what was interesting there is, is that on or about June the 22nd, 2016, WikiLeaks sent a private message to Guccifer to send any new material they have stolen from the DNC. June the 22nd, well, this is The Guardian reporting on an interview that Assange did with the ITV, where Assange said WikiLeaks were about to publish more Hillary Clinton emails. Ah. So the timeline is curious. If that was first contact, between Goose of a 2.0, or allegedly the first contact between Goose of a 2.0 and WikiLeaks, that blows this whole indictment just straight out the water because the timeline's wrong. It's wrong, wrong totally. Um, questions? I have quite a few here. Um, the first one is, did Julian Assange already have the documents? And the only reason he was asking um, Goose for 2.0 for to send the documents was to gather more sources. It's good journalistic practice, that is. I've said this in a tweet before. 
it's very possible and I know that other people such as um, Susie Dawson and um, uh, H.A. Goodman and many others, I forget their names now, are saying that what Goose of 2.0 had is actually the pedestrian emails that lends weight to that. Now I don't know that at all, I don't at all, but if that timeline is off, it, that would explain why General Assange is asking or WikiLeaks are asking um, Goose of 2.0 for the documents just to confirm what they already have and to see maybe if there's other documents in there that they didn't have. Uh, that would make sense. Now obviously uh, there's something else that I need to point out because in that um, in those indictment in that indictment um, there were details of how allegedly these Russian GRU agents uh, used or hired virtual private servers in America um, to contact DNC, DCCC, uh, their malware and all that sort of thing that they've got in there. I'm not a technical minded guy, but they were using these VPSs within America to actually uh, run this this operation or allegedly run this operation. Now, if that's the case, I've got a question for VIPs. Uh, VIPs is the Veterans Intelligence Professional Facility held it, headed up by Bill Binney and Ray McGovern because they concluded that um, the Goose for 2.0 files that they evaluated, which the forensic had evaluated, I know it gets complicated, but they concluded that it actually couldn't have been a hack from Russia. The only way it could have been done is if the hack came from somewhere within the east coast of the United States. Now, if that's the case and they were using VPSs, could they have run this hack from a VPS? Um, if that's the case, then VIPs, that sort of blows VIPs' uh, findings out the water as well. Because then it, uh, a hack would be entirely possible, wouldn't have to be a leak then. Um, I'd love somebody to, to answer that question. If anybody knows, please, please let me know. But I, I kind of think that it might do. But the thing about all this, apart from the fact there's no, not a shred, not a single shred of evidence whatsoever, is the timing. And I'm not the only one who's made this connection. This is days before the Trump-Putin summit. It's always on a Friday as well that they release these indictments. It's almost like, well, any questions that they've got, we can't answer them and it'll give us time to figure out how to answer them when it comes around on Monday. Um, so there's no evidence and then you've got the timing of it on a Friday and then you've got the timing of it just days before Trump is due to meet Putin at the summit. Um, and then you look at how the DNC and the people in the mainstream media have reacted to this. The first thing that they've done, here's Major Haberman of the, of the New York Times. The nation's top intelligence officer said on Friday that the persistent danger of Russian cyber attacks today was akin to the warnings the United States had stepped up terror threats ahead of September 11, 2001. So there you've got the top, so the neighbor, and nation's top intelligence officer. I sure she means Dan Coates. This is Andrea Mitchell. The nation's top spy, DNI, Dan Coates, warns that Russia is the worst foreign power threatening United States with cyber attacks and that warning lights are blinking red as terror threats were before 9-11. Again, it's ramping up the Russia scare, it's ramping up the McCarthyism, it's building up this red baiting. They desperately don't want this. Surely, if this happened, right, if this really was the case, you would say to the pre your president, go over there and find out what that F went on and give him a round of F for what he's done. Surely that should be the case. But whenever it comes to actually detente with a nation, such as North Korea and now Russia, they immediately attack him from the right. Immediately. Immediately attack him and say, you can't do it. Or immediately attack him and say, oh, you need to be more hawkish with these people. It's ramping it all up, all over again. Why are they? Why are they doing this when it's counterproductive, especially to the Democrats, their values? You know, or do they want war? 
Here's the Democratic Coalition, just to put, prove my point on Twitter. Top Democrats call for at real Donald Trump to cancel his summit with Putin following the announcement that 12 Russian intelligence officers had been indicted over election hacking. Is the Democratic Coalition again. Senator Schumacher says the indictments are further proof of what everyone but the President seems to understand. President Putin is an adversary who interfered in our elections to help President Trump win. Well, maybe Senator Schumer didn't actually read the indictment and maybe Senator Schumer didn't actually hear what Rod Rosentine said. Let me specifically remind you, Schumer, he said, and I quote, no allegations that it changed the result. None. To help President Trump win, the Democrats say. So there's no evidence. But that doesn't stop the red baiting happen. Of course. Of course. We would expect that. This is never, ever... And this is the, the other thing that really is important to note. This is never, ever going to see the inside of a court. And we are never, ever going to see any evidence to back up these claims that the FBI and Bob Mueller are making. Ever. Why? Because it's never going to see the inside of a court. Remember, he indicted, was it, I can't remember whether it's 14, I think it was 14 companies. No, 14 people in two companies. Um, and one of the companies was uh, Concord something. And they actually filed for, is it called disclosure? They filed for the proof. They said, okay, you've indicted us. Can we have the proof? They won't give it them. I'll put the, I'm sure I'll find it. I'll put the, I'll put something up on my left, left hand shoulder. Bob Muller won't actually hand over what they've got. They won't hand over the evidence. So, how are you meant to how are you meant to defend your case if you don't know what evidence you're meant to be defending yourself against? And the same is going to happen with this. So we've not seen any evidence. We're never going to see the evidence to back up these claims by the look of it. And the only thing that we've got to say that everything in this report and these this indictments are true is the word of the FBI and Bob Mueller. <laughs> the, 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 um, Bob Mueller, the guy who, As, uh, Director who's Kennedy's one of his first acts for the FBI was to Baghdad lie has failed to disarm his way his and his country and eventually my country as well into the Iraq war community. that cost at least Our a minimum of hundreds of thousands of civilian lives. Many people say over a million. Chemical or radiological material. So the timing is crucial. I think the timing is really, really um, interesting here. But what's most interesting, especially with this timing, is there's one man, <laughs> and I keep going back to this, and this is something that the, the people I mentioned before who were going, oh, it's not everything's a conspiracy. This is something that they never, ever, ever address. They never address it, ever. Don't you think it's curious of the timing of Julian Assange's silencing? Don't you think it's curious at all? Don't you think that these two things might be connected? Don't you think the fact that Julian Assange said to Adam Schiff, hey, I can prove it, was a, it wasn't the Russia. I can prove it. All you've got to do is just say, hey, we're not going to extradite you and you can have the proof. And he gets silenced just before he's, he's, he, there were talks of him uh, testifying to the UK government um, about the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Cambridge Analytica. By the way, <laughs> just before that, just just around just before the time the Skripal case absolutely fell apart around the UK government. Just before the so-called gas attack happened in Douma and three countries went and bombed Syria on the back of very flimsy evidence um, from very dubious avenues compared to a lot of other evidence from um good sources good independent sources not beholden to anybody who went over there and said this actual gas attack wasn't a gas attack the bombing happened then 
and obviously now Julian Assange can't respond to any of this either. Why is that? Why why is it if he can if he has the proof and he's got the proof to actually put this whole mystery to bed? Why won't they let him? Why won't they talk to him about it? Why why have they silenced him? Is it because the truth is not what they are saying it is? I'll let you decide. Um, but one thing's for sure. I'm extremely skeptical of everything in in this and all of these allegations and all of these indictments that the, the, the um, FBI are putting out there. All of them. They've lied to us constantly for the last 70 years. It's their job to lie to us, as Caitlin Johnston pointed out in an article yesterday. It's their job to our, our, their job to lie to the American people. You know, the intelligence services are not your friend. They're not. They're the establishment's friend. Never, ever forget that. And never forget that the guy heading it up, Bob Muller, and I'm putting it up again here, he was the guy that, you know, he was the guy that said this line. Secretary Powell presented evidence last week that Baghdad has failed to disarm its weapons of mass destruction. Until I see any evidence whatsoever, any hard evidence, I am going to be sceptical of this. And I highly suggest you are as well. Um, or you, you, you do as well. Because... None of it adds up. None of it adds up. Why would why would Guccifer, if it was if Guccifer was set up to take the scent away from Russia, why would they be copy pasting data onto documents that basically link straight back to Russia? Why would they do that? I mean, you know, do the Western media just think we all assume that Russian intelligence is useless? There are too many questions and there are too many unanswered questions for you to take these indictments at face value. I'm sorry. And there is no evidence whatsoever, not a shred of it, to back up any of the claims that they make in there. Until I see any of it, I'll be taking everything that they say with a pinch of salt. And I suggest you do too. If you enjoyed this video, please click the bell down there and subscribe um, so you get a notification of next time I drop a video. Also, I can't do this without your help, so if you can afford it and you enjoy my videos, please support the channel by uh, subscribing to my Patreon. Link is down there. You can do it for as little as $1 a month, and it really does help. If you can't afford it, that's fine. Please share my work and talk to other people about uh, the issues that I bring up. Thanks very much for your support. Until next time, peace and take care.